I've got React DevTools open here on the right. I'm going to record a profile of my application, type the word test and stop recording the profile. And now let's look at this profile. I've got the to-do list component and underneath we have all the renders of the to-do items component. And as I arrow through, we'll notice for every letter I typed, all of these to-do items re-rendered as well. That's not too efficient. Let's look at how React Memo can help us solve this problem. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at what React Memo is, how React Memo works, and when to apply React Memo. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Our starter code is from a React query intro that I published a couple of weeks ago, and it's ripe for a refactor using React Memo. So if you've downloaded the code or cloned the code from GitHub, either one, you've got the package JSON here where you see the dependencies. So we want to control backtick to open up a new terminal window. And inside of that, you would want to type npm install, and that would install all of those dependencies for you but you're also going to need JSON server to run this code. So if you don't have JSON server, you want to have npm i for install, and then you could have json-server-g to install that globally so you can run it like I am just about to show you here. So after you have it installed, type json-server and then dash w for watch, and then we're going to look in the data folder that you have in this repository. And inside the data folder, there is a db.json that we'll use that's full of the to-dos that we populate our to-do list with. And then dash p for port and 3500. Now this will be a fake REST API that we can use in development here as we work on this application. So now it's running. And then if we were to start our React app now, we would open up another bash window and do that. We're not quite ready to start though. What we have got is a source folder and if we open that up, we have a features folder and then there is our to-do list.js. Now, of course, every list item renders when anything changes because it's all in this one component. So the very first thing we need to do to optimize this is create a to-do item component and then we can decide when that item component renders. So let's go ahead and create that new file to do item.js. Now here I have ES7 React snippets installed so I can type RAFCE, press tab and get a jump start on my component. If you don't have that, you can just type this out. But what we want to do now is go back to the to-do list JS and scroll down to where we find the article that is created and that is right here. That's where we're mapping through the to-do items. And what we want to do is grab that article and everything inside of it, control X to cut it out and we're just going to paste it here inside of this return for the to-do item component. And we can save that for a little better formatting, but we still have all of the imports to take care of, the things that we use inside of this code. So back in the to-do list now, we'll scroll up to the top and we're going to use these first four lines, essentially everything except the use state. So I will control C to copy because we still need them here too. And we will import at the top here. So back up to the top and just paste those in. Now there are a couple of functions that we use inside of this code that we also need to grab from the to-do list JS. One was the delete to-do mutation and the other is the update to-do mutation. So back over in the to-do JS, we will scroll down and find those and you can see they're probably in a different color as mine are if you use VS Code as well. You can see update to-do mutation and delete to-do mutation have a darker color which indicates they are not being used in the file. So I'll highlight both of these Control X to cut them out and we'll just put them here at the top of the to-do item component paste them in and save. We are almost finished creating our to-do item component. We have almost everything we need. We need to go back to that to-do list one more time and here we're going to copy but not cut where we create our query client because now we also need it in the to-do item. So here at the beginning of the component I'll also paste that in. And now that I save we can see what imports we're not using in this component. So we're not using use query 
we're not using get to do's or add to do and we're not using the font awesome upload icon here so that cleans up our imports as well now back in the to-do list we could also do a little bit of cleanup so here we're not using the update or delete to do we could remove both of those and we're not using the font awesome trash here either and we could get rid of that spare line that was there now we need to go ahead and import the to-do component so I could do that at the very top so import to do item and that would be from dot slash to do item there we go and save that now once we scroll down where we mapped through the JSX that we were creating before now we need to actually put that to do item here so let's take everything between those parentheses or at least the curly brackets and now we can put our to do item component it's going to need a key so that should equal the to do dot id and then we just want to pass the full to do in as well here so there's the to do and then close the component and we have modified the to do list now it uses the component as it creates that jsx content okay everything is ready we should be able to start the application now and have it work as you saw in the beginning of the video so now we'll type npm start in this second bash window we already have json server running over here in the other bash window i'll drag the code over to the left and we should see the app start here on the right oh and to do is not defined i forgot that one important piece here as we created this to do item it needs to actually receive the to do right here at the top so that comes in as the prop and now it should be good i'll close that and bring this back over and there's our to-do list okay everything's running as we expect it to i'll close the previous one i'll bring this over to full screen and then Control shift i to go ahead and open up the dev tools and let's go to the profiler it looks like we had a lot of errors there we need to clean out as well so let's clean that out that was probably in between where we made the changes everything seems to be running well now back in the profiler now let's go ahead and start recording a profile and i'll just type my name and press enter to create a new to do stop recording and now we see the profiler here so i'll click on the to-do list and now what we see here is a to-do item that was rendered and all of these different to-do items were rendered but let's arrow through and now you can see they were all rendered here basically for every letter i'm typing most if not all of the to-do items are rendering before we even created that new to-do item at the very end okay so let's clear this out and now we optimize this and we can use react memo to do that so let's go back to our to-do item component and that's where we are right now and let's talk about what we can do with react memo and what react memo is really all about so at the top we could import it in two different ways many times you'll see an import of react from react notice the uppercase and the lowercase the uppercase on the import and then from the lowercase react and if you see it this way which we'll start out with that then we could apply it here at the bottom so i'll create just a little bit of room to do that and then we'll say const and we'll call this memoized to do item and we'll set this equal to react dot memo and then we pass in the to do item component so react memo is a higher order function that returns a new function after it wraps the function that it receives and really when we talk about react memo it's not traditional memoization it doesn't keep this huge cache of props it's received in the past it just looks at the previous one so with that it's only really going that one layer deep the previous props versus what it's receiving so you could call react memo uh, react change if props have changed or something like that is essentially what it's doing so once we have that instead of returning the to-do item we're just going to return the memoized to-do item as far as what react considers a memo to be and now that we've made this change let's drag the code back to the left and then drag the browser back to a full screen open dev tools again with Control shift and the letter i go to the profiler and I'll refresh the page just to make sure everything is as expected. Now here, I'll start recording a profile and really even instead of typing, let's just make a change. So I'll delete the Dave to do item that I created before 
and then stop profiling. And let's see what we've got. So I'll click the to-do list. You can see these to-do items did not render. And as we arrow through, the to-do items are still not rendering. And that looks great, but we get to the last one, which after we deleted a to-do item, now it looks like they all rendered, or almost all. I'm not going to count all of them, but we've got a lot of renders there. But they didn't change. I just deleted an item. So we still have an issue although it's better than it was in the beginning. So let's talk about why this is happening. So I'll close that again, drag this back over. Let's look at the code in full screen one more time. Now, React Memo does a shallow comparison. So we have primitive values like strings, numbers, booleans. We compare those value to value and everything is as we expect it to be. But also a shallow comparison for object types, which would be arrays and objects, that is by reference. And so when we create that to-do list again, when we map through all of those and we're grabbing that to-do data again, essentially, what is happening is they all get new references and so then it creates all the new items again. Well, React Memo allows you to solve this issue with a support function here, a function at the end. Now we could create an anonymous function right here and we would of course have to pass in the props, but I'm going to show you how you can create a named function as well. So let's just call this r equal. And what we're going to do is have the previous, you could just call this previous if you want to, but it's previous props and then next props. You could really name these parameters anything you want to as long as you know what they are. So this is what it previously received. This is what it's about to receive. And then here inside the function we'll return and now we refer to the previous props dot to do dot ID. And let's see if that is equal to the next props dot to do dot ID. But that won't be everything we need because what about the completed as well? So that could change. So then we can put the and and say previous props dot to do dot completed equals next props dot to do dot completed. So we need all of that really. I'll save that and Alt Z to wrap the code down so we can see it all here without scrolling. And that is the full function. So now let's just pass this in here with the R equal and save. So it will call this function as a comparison. Now that shallow comparison that React defaults to helps it be a little speedier, but this won't take too long to what we're doing is essentially breaking down our objects and once again, looking at primitive values. So we've got an ID number compared to another ID number, and then we've got a Boolean compared to another Boolean here. With the changes saved, let's drag the code back to the left, bring the browser to full screen once again, open up the dev tools with Control Shift I. We'll go to the profiler. I want to reload everything just to make sure it's fresh. Everything looks good there. Let's go ahead and begin recording. I'll once again just type in my name and press enter, stop recording the profile, and now let's see what we get back. So we've got our to-do list, and these to-do items did not render, and that's what we expect. And as we arrow through each snapshot of the profile for each letter that was typed, and other things as well, we are not rendering those. Now let's get to the last one, and notice we only rendered the new one. All the others received what they already had, and that function that we put in helped that compared to the last time we looked at this where on the last scene of our profiler, it rendered all of those again, even when we just deleted an item and didn't add anything new. Now, we didn't render those items and we only rendered the new one that needed to be rendered. So that's what React Memo can help you with. Now, really deciding when to use it is something else. This is clearly an obvious example of when we don't want to render 200 to-do items every time and we only want to render the ones that are needed. React is very good at rendering as well, so it's not a huge issue, but it's something you can do. But talking about when to apply it, well, I like to go ahead and create my application first. I don't really think about the optimization until I have the application up and running like I 
want it to be. Then I think about how can I optimize my application. And that's when I start checking for things like this, where I can use React Memo to prevent those additional renders and maybe speed everything up just a little bit. So my overall suggestion is to build your app first and then optimize it afterwards. Oh, and quickly, if you don't want to use react.memo, you can remove the react dot and just use memo. But then when you import it, you need to destructure it at the top. So then we would have import memo destructured from React and everything should work the same. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.